to Becoming Supernatural, Chapter 7 by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm your host, Dame Lillian Walker. So let's dive into Chapter 7 and uh, see what this is all about. So Chapter 7 talks about heart intelligence. So since our human ancestors first began etching their histories upon cave walls and stone tablets like a thread through a needle of time, the heart has appeared as a symbol to represent health, wisdom, intuition, guidance, and higher intelligence. So the ancient Egyptians who referred to the heart as Eve believed the heart rather than the brain was the center of life and the source of human wisdom. The Mesopotamians and the Greeks both thought of the heart as the center of their soul. The Greeks, however, considered it an independent source of heat within the body, while the Mesopotamians believed it was a fragment of the sun's heat. They even performed human sacrifices whereby they extracted a still beating human heart to offer it to the sun god. The Romans understood the heart to be the body's most life-giving vital organ. So in the 17th century, during the early years of scientific revolution, French philosopher René Descartes argued that mind and body were two radically distinct substances. So through this mechanistic view of the universe, people began to view the heart as an extraordinary machine. The mechanism of the heart as a physical pump began to overshadow its nature as humanity's connection to an innate intelligence. Through scientific inquiry, the heart slowly ceased to be recognized as our connection to feelings, emotions, and the higher selves. And it has only been through the science of the last few decades that we've begun to reconcile, understand, and recognize the true significance of the heart both as a source that generates electromagnetic fields and as our connection to the unified field. So we now know that the heart beyond its obvious role in sustaining life is not simply a muscular pump that moves blood throughout the body, but an organ that is capable of influencing feelings and emotions. The heart is a sensory organ that guides our decision-making ability as well as our understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. It is a symbol that transcends time, place, and culture. It is a commonly accepted premise that when we are connected to the heart's inner knowing, we can tap into its wisdom as a source of love and higher guidance. And you may well be wondering why it is that out of all the organs in the body, such as the spleen, liver, or kidneys, the heart is the only one to have intelligence. Since 2013, we've gone to great lengths to measure and quantify coherence and transformation, which are central to understanding the heart's role. Almost everyone recognizes that the elevated feelings of heart connect us to the consciousness of love, compassion, and gratitude, joy, unity, acceptance, and selfless, selflessness. So these are the feelings that fill us up and make us feel whole and connected rather than the feelings of stress that divide communities and drain us of vital energy. So the problem is that these elevated feelings of the heart often occur through chance, dependent upon some external in our environment, rather than as something that we can produce for ourselves on demand. So without a doubt, it is a challenge to maintain our mental and emotional equilibrium. In today's fast-paced, stress-filled, productivity-focused, and hurry-up-and-finish culture, and the loss of this equilibrium can have very serious ramifications for our health. For instance, as the turn of the 20th century, hardly anyone died of heart disease, while today it's the, leading, it's the actual leading cause of death for both men and women. So each year in the United States alone, 
heart disease costs approximately 207 billion in healthcare, services, medication, and lost productivity. Stress is one of the main contributing factors to heart disease, and it's reaching an epidemic level. Fortunately, there's an antidote. What we've found in researching and studying the many facets of heart coherence is that we can in fact regulate our internal states independent of the conditions in our external environment. Just like developing, any skill voluntarily creating heart coherence requires knowledge, application, and practice. So integral to our understanding of our heart, it has been our partnership with pioneering groundbreaking work of the HeartMath Institute. HMI is a nonprofit research and educational organization that better understands and it works to better understand heart brain coherence. So since 1991, HMI has researched and developed reliable scientifically based tools to help people bridge the connection between their hearts and minds, as well as deepen their connection with their hearts of others. So their mission is to help people bring their physical, mental and emotional systems into balance alignment through the intuitive guidance of the heart. The foundation of our partnership is built upon the shared belief that in order to create a new future, a person needs to marry a clear intention, a coherent brain, with an elevated emotion, a coherent heart. And HMI's research has proven that by combining an intention or thought, which as you have read, acts as the electrical charge with a feeling or emotion, which you already understand acts as an electromagnetic charge. So we can change our biological energy. And when we change our energy, we change our lives. So it's in the union, these two elements, that produces measurable effects on matter. So moving our biology away from living in the familiar past to living in the future, so at our workshops across the world, we teach our students to maintain and sustain these elevated states of being so they can seize leave living as victims of circumstance, swinging from one emotion to the next and begin living as the creators of their reality. This is the process whereby we create a new state of being or a new, person, a new personality. So this all creates a new personal reality. So the, for the past several years, one of the goals of our partnership with HMI has been to teach our students to intentionally regulate and sustain something called heart coherence. Like the regular beating of a drum, heart coherence refers to the physiological function of the heart that causes it to beat in a consistent, rhythmic, orderly matter. The opposite, when it's not operating in an orderly manner, is heart incoherence. When we are in heart coherence, we can access the heart's intelligence, which HMI defines as the flow of awareness and insight that we experience once the mind and emotions are brought into balance and coherence through a self-initiated process. This form of intelligence is experienced as direct intuitive knowing that manifests in thought and emotions that are beneficial for ourselves and others. What I love about this, I'm going to interject here, is that it is not just for our own personal benefit. It is not just a purely selfish act. It's actually a selfless act. It's selfless because you are not only benefiting yourself, but you are also affecting those who are, who are around you because of your electromagnetic field is actually fanning out and spanning and being more complete and whole 
it is a natural phenomena that it's going to affect everybody who is not just in your immediate environment, but it is a global signal that is broadcast outward. And as we know from having read chapters one through six, one of the natural phenomena that takes place is there is a natural and logical systematic entrainment of everything that is around you. It is not limited to other human beings. So all beings, whether it's human, animal, plant, or energetic in any form or any density, it will be affected by this. So I think that's very exciting to know that you are actually contributing to existence, if you will, in this manner. And it is um, a very, very, very powerful force. So as you'll discover in this chapter, the benefits of heart coherence are numerous, including lowering blood pressure, improving the nervous system and hormonal balance, and improving brain function. When you maintain and sustain elevated and emotional states independent of the conditions of your external environment, you can gain access to the kind of the high level intuition that fosters a better understanding of yourself and others. This helps prevent stressful patterns in your life, increases mental clarity, and promotes better decision making. So in addition to HMI's research findings, our data strongly suggests that sustained heart-centered emotions Promote healthier gene expression. Heart coherence begins with the steady, coherent drumbeat of the heart through cultivating, practicing, and sustaining elevated emotions. Such emotions include gratitude, appreciation, thankfulness, inspiration, freedom, kindness, selflessness, compassion, love, and joy. And the benefits of that coherent beat are felt throughout all systems of the body. Consciously or unconsciously, many of us practice feeling unhappy, angry, or fearful each day. I'm gonna pause here because another, another byproduct of the feelings of unhappiness, anger, and fear are nervousness, stress, anxiety, sadness, grief, self-pity, pity for others, worry, and probably the most slight, which is um, very deceptive and, and very underhanded, is doubt. When you have self-doubt, that really takes energy away from you and it keeps you from taking a step forward, which is why fear uses doubt when some of the other things don't work. It uses doubt to, it's the little crack where it kind of gets in there. So doubt is kind of disguised or actually fear is disguised as doubt to make you wonder if, and it's kind of like a, it's like a gas leak or an energy leak, if you will, in your energetic body where you start, you know, at the beginning, it's a small little leak, but it's a leak that grows bigger and bigger, bigger, because maybe you start off with 1% doubt and that 1% becomes 2%, becomes 4%, becomes 8%, 16%, before you know you're, you have a thousand percent doubt and you're paralyzed because you can't move forward. So um, I just saw another little orb go by, <laughs> pretty cool. Okay, moving on. So consciously or unconsciously, many of us practice feeling unhappy, angry, or fearful each day. So why not practice creating, maintaining joyful, loving, altruistic states instead. Wouldn't that eventually create a new internal order resulting in overall health and happiness? Okay, so he doesn't give an answer to this question. He's just posing that as a rhetorical question. So I'm going to answer to you from, a, from my personal experience and my perspective from where I'm standing right here, looking at you through this, through this camera uh, it's asking, would, wouldn't that result in overall health and happiness? And yes, for me, it has. It has in the past, it does in the present, and it will in the future. 
Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. One of the things that um, I was doing this morning and I was just in a very um, uppity, joyous, blissful state and I was grabbing my juice, I was getting my acai juice and adding some you know, psyllium, whole health psyllium husks to it and I was also gonna make coffee right after that and I was just emptying out my dishwasher, kind of admiring the view out my windows, which are kind of like, I was telling my daughter later today, you know, later in the day that I kind of feel like as I look out the windows um, of my home, it's kind of like having these virtual reality movies that are going on as I look out one or the other. They're all so beautiful and there's people outside, people playing basketball, skateboarding, riding their bikes, beautiful palm trees, flowers, etc. And it's just a beautiful thing to be able to see with my eyes. And, you know, to look at the sky, to see the blue sky, you know, early this morning, it was super foggy. So it was, um, and that has its own beauty. And I appreciate the beauty of the stillness because nobody was out, you know, that early this morning. But later in the day, that all cleared up before noon. And then it was bright blue, clear skies and the beautiful bustling trees green vibrant trees and you could hear the wind blowing and the rustling energy and sound between the leaves and, and the palm trees and then of course then there were people and you could hear the basketball boom boom you know just the pitter patter of the basketball also sound sounded beautiful and um and so i was just in a place of saying thank you. I was thank you, thanking my angels, thanking my spirit guides, thanking God, thanking infinite source intelligence, yada, yada. I was thanking the, you know, um, other dimensional beings and healing energies that have been, you know, who have blessed me, who have um, given me not only biological upgrades and have um, adjusted me in all sorts of different ways, and then I actually said the words, you know, I think I thanked them specifically also for, you know, the past, the present and the future um, adjustments that they've given me. And the, I actually said, and the light codes. And right after I said light codes, they said to me, and dimensional overlays. I said dimensional overlays. So I had never heard of that before. But I was just purely in a place of appreciation. I was in, a, in joy. I was, you know, kind of blissing out and I was vibing really good. And I was just in appreciation, holding in high value um, my current state. And, you know, I was reflecting a little bit back about certain mystical experiences that I've had, um, even communications, both on a 3D level with other people, as well as, um, you know, in my altered states during meditation, there were certain insights, revelations, lucid dreams. I was in appreciation, holding high in esteem and in value those things. And, and um, I was just in that place when all of a sudden I had that message. Uh, and then I was uh, kind of dumbfounded and kind of a miffed and uh, going, what, you know, <laughs> I know what light codes are, but I definitely did not have any awareness or have ever heard of the term of a dimensional overlay. So then it was, of course, as I continued in that place of gratitude and openness, I was just allowing myself to hear and receive, and I was just enjoying this process. And then after that, that understanding that, that intuition, that communication that came from a different realm that I can't really articulate or explain with, with regular language in any language, I realized that that came to me because I was in what Dr. Joe likes to call the ultimate state of receivership is gratitude and appreciation. And I believe that in chapter two or three, he actually says that, that gratitude and appreciation are the ultimate state of receivership. Well, there is a secret that's in plain view 
it's somewhat hidden because we read it and we keep on going on. It's like, yeah, yeah, gratitude, appreciation. Everybody says gratitude journal, blah, blah, blah. And this is one of the things that I want to call your attention as we are reading and we're peeling back the layers of the onion. We're reading the words. Our left brain is processing that knowledge from one level of understanding. As we dive in deep into this, we are to also, in order to, I don't wanna say awaken, because as you do meditation, of course, it awakens and it opens not only your heart because you put the intention of wanting to open up your heart, you're bringing your energy up as you, as you do the specific breath that Dr. Joe you know, teaches and talks about. You are also um, where attention goes, energy flows. So as you take your attention and you bring it up your spinal cord, column and you are directing the energy from the first energy center at the base of your perineum and you're bringing it up to the second the third the fourth the fifth yada yada you're the energy is actually moving and there is going to if your heart is closed for whatever reason it it, it will it's inevitable that your heart will open and then you will be broadcasting an even greater amount of joy and love and gratitude and appreciation and bliss and so on and so forth. So be aware that as you, everybody can be grateful. Everybody can hold something in appreciation, some one in appreciation, a place a person, place, or thing in appreciation. You know, the touching of your dog when you pet your dog or your cat or whatever pet that you might have, or you might have a beautiful plant in your home. And as you're caring and tendering for it, you can be in gratefulness and gratitude that that plant is in your reality in that moment. And you can recognize the, the shades of green, the beauty of the color of if it has flowers, the beauty of the color of the flowers. And when you hold that in gratitude that you actually have it, and it is part of your experience, you can also appreciate, hold it in higher value, that it is with you as opposed to still being at the store and you wishing, desiring, and hoping to have it in your home, but you actually have it here now. So that simple act of gratitude and appreciation puts you in a place that you're out of your thinking brain because now you are doing a literally a heart-centered activity. You're getting out of the critical thinking mind. You're getting out of the conscious mind. By being in gratitude and appreciation, you are accessing the feeling and the brain and the vibration of the brain of your heart. And now that can bubble up into your physical brain so that then your conscious mind becomes aware, like I was aware earlier today of this communication, this insight that was given to me that I'd never heard before. It wasn't something that was coming from my memory. It wasn't something coming from my critical thinking brain. Um, because I never heard of the term or the concept or that experience. I didn't know that it existed, but somehow I was able to access it. And I realized it because I was in a place of gratitude and appreciation. So that is my, again, you know, I'm all about, you know, having you get not only the secrets to success, but the shortcuts, if you will. If there's something that I can language, language, if I can express it, if I can share with you or convey the feeling that I have had through these experiences and how I got to certain things so that it shortcuts, it collapses the time frames and kind of gives you like an easier access so that you go, oh, I never thought of it before. Oh yeah, that feels right. Oh yeah, this resonates with me. Oh, I'm going to try that. I mean, just as you're listening and as you're participating with this particular broadcast and if you are just simply if you really want to get an exponential level of benefit from reading all 14 chapters of this book if you just come here with an intention of being grateful that wow in the next 
15 days from chapter one until chapter 14. It'll be 15 days from beginning to end, soup to nuts. And I will read this entire book. I'll be able to go back and rewind it at whatever time I want and I can dive in deeper. And if I just show up with an intention of being grateful that this is accessible to me here and now, and I appreciate it by holding it in higher value, that is broadcasting gratitude, appreciation, and love. By that fact alone, you will automatically be opening yourself up to receiving that wisdom that's coming from that other etheric realm through the brain of your heart. Your heart will pick up those signals and it will then interpret them and bring them to you so that your brain goes, oh, and you'll recognize that they're not your own thoughts because you don't think that way. It's a different languaging pattern. It doesn't sound like you. And in fact, it's really difficult to repeat how that realm uh, communicates to you because it's not your natural languaging pattern. So luckily, some of the things that I became aware of, I went to my group of fellow mystics and I um, immediately sent out a communi communication to them. A portion of it was in text form and a portion of it was in a very brief video and then there were some video clips that i shared with my it's my own personal intimate group all of whom were all advanced students and uh, mystics and i said hey this is this was just revealed to me so because i know that we are all connected not only you and i over this video but my group of fellow mystics we are all connected and we are all putting pieces of the puzzle together. And um, I'm kind of curious if somebody else maybe had the same download, the same um, intuit cognizance. I, I consider myself highly intuit cognizant. And I didn't even know that that word existed until it was given to me months back. And so I'm like, wow. So there's no such thing as coincidences. There's more than one of us who are tapping into this realm because we are in this place of gratitude and appreciation and we have an open heart and we're willing to receive and we're just, we're loving our lives. We're loving life. We're loving this experience without the condition of the world that's seen in the 3D that our eyes see and that our five senses experience without the condition of everything being perfect out there we're still in a place of joy of love and of happiness and because our internal state is in that really whole like holy cow it's a great place to be in that then then somehow it seems like the outside world is like the alchemist you take base metal and you turn it into gold where it's, um, it really is a more vibrant, beautiful, loving place and state to be in. So moving, going back to the book, the next section is called The Heart Bridge. So appropriate because this chapter seven, by the way, chapter seven, if you don't know this chap, number seven is a holy number. It's God's favorite number. If you follow the traditions of um, any Judeo-Christian belief system, whether it's Jewish, you know, the Kabbalist, you know, the Kabbalah, Kaibalian, mystical teachings of those, Essenes, Christian, Jewish, Catholic, all of those, even Muslim, because it's an, it's, I don't want to uh, offend. This is not about religion. This is um, just letting you know that we all we all came from the source, the same source. And all religion. One of the things that was revealed to me back in 2010, as I walked on the beach and I was doing a lot of soul searching and I was asking God, you know, all these different questions. And one of the things that He revealed to me was that the issue of religions. And again, this is this is not about any kind of religious belief system. I'm not trying to impose anything to anyone. I'm just explaining to you my experiences and my perceptions and what has been revealed to me that definitely, I haven't heard anybody else. There's certain things that nobody, I've never heard another human being tell me that. 
So one of the things that was revealed at that time was that everything was all, in terms of the religions, they were, all came the, from, their origins were all the same origin. But because people were all over the globe and so many of them were geographically separate one from the other, you know, from climates to, to um, you know, geography, the way people respond to the earth elements and so forth, is going to be contingent upon what the geography is, what the climate is, how much time you spend inside versus outside depends on all those factors. Um, people's personality, you know, we, we know scientifically that, you know, people who live more around the um, equator, the sun belt, if you will, have a hotter, feistier personality. People who are from the Mediterranean, like myself, we, we have a hotter, feistier uh, more of a mercurial, if you will, will uh, type of personality as opposed to our closer to the colder climates, which are more Nordic or the South Pole. Again, you know, it's how you interact with others and with your environment. And so because of that, religion had to cater and language itself to appeal to each and every one of those cultures. So in essence, it's like having 31 flavors ice cream. All of it is ice cream. All of it is religion. And you have to have 31 flavors because not everybody is going to want like and digest vanilla you know some people like sherbet or neapolitan or rocky road or chocolate or chocolate with nuts or like myself i love chocolate malted crunch oh boy so anyhow this is not about ice cream but you get i hope you guys get the idea so that's it i just wanted to impress that upon you so that you have an idea where it is that I'm coming from. Okay, diving into the next section. It's called the heart bridge. So the heart bridge. So as you read in the chapter on blessing the energy centers, the heart located right behind the breastbone is the body's fourth energy center. It is our bridge to greater levels of awareness and energy. So please lock down on that. Your heart, it is our bridge to the greater levels of awareness and energy. So if you're looking to open up, to not be limited to the physical brain and to open up your levels of consciousness so that you can reach those higher dimensions, those higher levels of consciousness, if you wanna tap into infinite source intelligence to the great, uh, I am to the creator, to whatever language, you know, um, the universe, to your higher self, your true self, your true north, whatever label you want to give it, they're all, they're all correct. None of them are wrong. All of them are fine. The great I am, then the heart is the portal. That's the gateway that you have to use the key to unlock your heart, to access that. So the good news is all of you, every single one of you, anybody who is watching this video, anybody who exists on this planet, we can all do that. We're all born with a heart. And because we have that heart, that organ, we can use that, which is tens of thousands of times far more powerful. They actually have measured electromagnetically that the electromagnetic frequency and the electrical charge of the heart is thousand, ten, over 10,000 times more powerful and reaching a greater distance than the electromagnetic field that is created by your brain. So the brain has a certain amount of electrical conductivity and electricity that actually fires and wires because of our neurocircuitry, but make no mistakes, our heart has a, a whole lot more electricity and a much greater electromagnetic field. Another thing, your brain does not feel. It simply doesn't. Check, do a, do a Google search. Go on, um, my gosh, you could go on WebMD. You can do a search for, reach out to neurologists on Facebook, on Instagram, on whatever social media platform is, you know, pick your poison, whichever one's your favorite, reach out to them and ask them 
so that you get a one-on-one -on -one response. Ask them, is it true that if we were to cut, poke, or prod the brain that you would feel nothing, that the brain has no feeling? And they're gonna tell you, yeah, there's no, like when we do brain surgery, we don't anesthetize the brain. We do local anesthetics, we pe put people under because of course they do feel, you know, like you feel like when you scratch your scalp. So your scalp, you know, it's covered by skin. So yeah, your skin has a lot of nerves in them. So you have feeling receptors in your skin. Even your cranium, you know, when they have to actually open it, you know, with a saw, I don't want to get gruesome, but that's actually what they, how they do it when they do brain surgery. So yeah, those things do feel, but your actual brain organ doesn't. However, your heart, on the other hand, it's a muscle like your leg muscle, like the muscles in your hand, your fingers, your arm, your feet. And it is highly sensitive. It is far more sensitive and sentient than any other organ of the body. Why? I guess we'll have to ask the creator why he chose the heart as opposed to anything else, but it is, you know, you can't live without a heart. So it is the bridge, it is the gateway for higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of intelligence, higher, higher levels of intuition, higher, higher infinite levels of everything. Anything you've ever wanted is in that dimension. And all you have to do is connect to your heart and open it up. That's the purpose of this book, is for you to learn how to access that, how to bridge it. And it's, it's simple, it's not complicated. This book, Albeit it's wonderful in that it dovetails, it dovetails, excuse me, the mystical teachings of the past 15,000 years, along with the scientific community, so that now it's really one and the same. It's just that the language and vocabulary of mysticism and these esoteric hidden teachings is one language, language patterns and science has a different set of language patterns. They're both organizing, filing, and displaying and communicating the exact same thing. Science is only like two, 300 years old. This language over here is about 15,000 years old. Now, why am I picking 15,000 and not 2,000? Because we now know we actually have artifacts that show human beings who were discovered, for example, in Laguna Beach, which is not too far from where I live, on the Channel Islands, there is a woman that was discovered 15,000 years ago, an Indian woman. She was a Shumash. Again, on the Channel Islands here off the coast of Ventura in California. Those are just two places. There are other places around the world where they have discovered human skeletal remains, and they've known that human beings lived here as long as 15,000 years ago. So these teachings have been around for a very long time. Okay, so that's the good news. It's simple. Simple isn't easy. And it just takes practice. So, okay, so let's going to move on. So the heart is the intersection of our lower three energy centers associated with our earthly body and our upper three energy centers. So heart, throat, and pineal gland are associated with our higher self. It serves as our connection to the unified field and represents the union of duality or polarity. So I wanna call your attention to what he talks about here. It serves as our connection to the unified field. Um, Maxwell Planck talked about the zero point gravity field. Um, in quantum physics, as a result, they talk about the zero point quantum field. It is basically that space, like if, if they look at in quantum physics, we tend to look at things at not a molecular level, they look at things at a subatomic level because they're looking at the quantum level. We now have known for quite some time that molecules are mostly, they're like mostly space, uh, like more than 99% space. If you look at an atom, it is also 99% space. When you go into the subatomic level, you're looking at electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks. And as they look at that, there's very infinitesimally tiny 
particles and it's mostly space and what's in that space are waveforms of energy. It's all potential waveforms until either a scientist, if they're doing an experiment, whoever the scientist is who is the observer of the experiment as he or she observes and puts, uses their free will to focus on that experiment as they look at those subatomic particles, it alters those subatomic particles. They're actually subatomic waveforms of energy and they become particles and waveforms of energy. And as they continue to observe it, then more and more particles start to form and they start to amass. And they act actually can see this with these high powerful electron microscopes. So again, they're able to prove how we can create from the subatomic, from the quantum level and have it manifest so that we can actually see it in 3D. The other thing I wanna share with you guys is again, there's so many clues. Our words and our language are so powerful. We have a lot of hidden knowledge that we gloss over and we don't really pay attention because we, we think we know what words we mean and we really don't understand or haven't realized until we take a moment to stop and pay attention to the words that are before us. So the word manifest, manifest, manny, manual, fest, festival. So manny as in you are creating with your hands, it's a hands-on thing. Festival, you are celebrating the creation of whatever it is that you have hands on done. That's what manifestation is. Manual, festival, celebration, tation, attention, intention. Again, now we go to the word intention. You have attention, which is an outward focusing of awareness, using your free will to focus outside intention is taking that awareness and focusing inside now either inside your body or inside the void where you, when you are doing a meditation you're setting your intention and now that intention is something that is unseen it's inside in the void it's in space in the blackness if you will in that void comes come the downloads so that's where you get the wisdom what is wisdom is it intelligence wisdom wise dominion wise dominion so you now have the wise dominion you're dominating this wisdom and that's what wisdom is because now you're not limited to to the physical organ of the brain. You're tuning in, tapping in, and turning on into infinite source intelligence, which is all around you. It's in you and all around you. You become that awareness of that. Does that make sense? And so that is what we're trying, um, you know, that, that is the goal is to bring you to that point so that you can tune in, tap in, and turn on to that and know that this is your birthright. You know that you have this, know that it is there for you. There's no accidents, there's just coincidences. What is a coincident? Co, it's with, incident. A coincidence is where, in math, they define it as where two planes, you have two planes, collide or two lines intersect at a specific point in time. That's what a coincidence is. So that's what this is. You're watching this video and your awareness, your view is coinciding with mine. And that's why you're witnessing this. I hope this all makes sense. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to put any questions, comments, or concerns in the com comments below. I respond to everybody. 
So as we said before, it serves as our connection to the unified field and represents the union of duality or polarity. It is where separation, division, and polarized energy merge to become one, where opposites unify as the yin and the yang, and the good and the bad, positive, negative. I'm gonna say positive and negative because our head has a positive charge, the base of our spine has a negative charge, because as I mentioned before, this earth, <laughs> the globe, is a giant magnet, and that's what keeps us grounded to the floor is the negative charge that's at the base of our spine. It goes down to the soles of our feet, and as it touches the floor and the earth, quite literally, you're grounded. So the good and the bad, the positive, the negative, male, female, past and future. So when your heart becomes coherent, your nervous system responds by increasing the brain's energy creativity and intuition, which has a positive effect on virtually every organ in the body. So I'm gonna read that again, because some of you guys are wondering, well, how do I increase my energy? How do I increase my creativity? The answer is right here. You've been praying, you've been asking, you've been seeking. Here it is, we're serving it up on a platter for you. By increasing the brain's energy, creativity, and intuition, which has a positive effect on virtually every organ in the body, now your heart and your brain are working together. They're connected now. Instead of being disconnected, they're connected. Now they're aligned. So now this is causing you to feel more whole connected and content, not only within your own body, but also with everything and everybody around you. So when you are in a heart-centered state, the wholeness you feel consumes any feelings you may have of want and lack. From this creative state of wholeness and oneness, magic magic begins to happen in your life because you're no longer creating from a, a disconnected place. You're no longer in duality. You're not in duality and you're no longer in separation. You're no longer waiting for something outside of you to provide relief from the internal feelings of lack, emptiness, or separation. Instead, you're becoming more familiar with your new ideal self and creating new experiences of yourself. If you keep activating your heart center properly enough times during the creative process each day, in time, you will feel more like your future has already happened. And how can you ever want or feel lack if you feel whole? If the first three centers reflect our animal nature and are based on polarity, opposites, competition, need, and lack, the fourth center begins our journey to our divine nature.